love that intro why is that the hardest intro in the game <laughs> somebody tell me why because uh because I, I picked it i just oh, think uh, I, I really think it's the first fucking first piano keynotes and then i'm just my the hair on my arms get like they stand up it's, it's crazy i feel like you know hey welcome to the show you know what i mean how are you yeah, That's yeah. Right, steven here we are so fucking lucky to have you guys on this damn podcast. I want you to know that. Thanks for being oh, here. Oh, my heart you know, I'm all excited too because you already know fucking Arlington's coming up. That's uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're, getting, we're getting there. What are we? Ten days away from Arlington? Just about? Not this weekend. No, it's not this weekend. As somebody originally thought. <laughs> yeah, Des. Damn, Des. Yeah, exactly. I have no idea what happened there. Like. I'm I'm super glad I went to the actual like website to see because I wanted to book my room too. So I actually went to the actual to see what days it was. But if I wouldn't went off the fucking text message she sent me, I would have been fucked too. Cause she was like, here, these are the I just looked at what time she was flying in and I was trying to, you know, range it close to that. But fuck Yeah, luckily I had those exact same times, just different day. The right day. <sighs> All right. Well <laughs> glad we fixed that, right? That's that's fixed. It's fixed. 50 bucks out of the bank, no big deal. Just, you know, charge it to the charge it to the to the airlines, I guess. Fuck. Anyways, man, everyone, I, we just want to, you know, other than I appreciate, uh, you know, my teammate right here, my teammates. I also want to appreciate all the viewers, everybody who supports the channel, man. And if you're new to, uh, you know, the podcast, do us a huge solid. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Just do all the basic stuff. So if you don't mind, that way you're on top of any, you know, Unfiltered Reptile Podcasts that we come out because, listen, we're bringing heat. Tonight's heat. I'm talking about super hot summer mm -hmm. Texas time heats. It's it's fucking nuts. It's really nuts how sick this podcast is tonight. And it's really nuts on how excited and say that almost every podcast. But I can't fucking help it. How can I help it? I mean, Let Steven. Me bring on the best guests. Like, how can't you just keep getting more excited every major guest we have, you know? Steven, you, you know damn well we talked about bringing this guest on a long time ago. And... Mm -hmm. uh been in the discussion for a while That's a, a while like like we have some other big stuff in the back like in the back end that we're just waiting it's like a time we're like we're like waiting to hear the okay and we're gonna get them on this guy is definitely one of those guys like we were just like fucking waiting for the perfect time and thank thankfully to our special guest it was able to happen and there's just so many things behind why this fucking episode's sick i i just want to say obviously bullens <laughs> Bullens! We get to talk about Bullens, my fucking dream species. You know what I mean? How many people could actually talk about Bullens, like really talk about Bullens? How many people can talk about Bullens pythons and actually tell you how they bred them in captivity? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. That's why you got to listen to this podcast because like... And then fucking right on, cool Bullens. What about Croc Monitor? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And not just Bullens pythons. I mean... Bam, big 3-0. Like, you know this is oh, and it's thirty. Oh, dude, and, and crocodile pegus. We got some self interest there. Starting a zoo, down. more than one zoos. Zoo that our special that our special zoo. guest is a part of. Our special guest is a huge player in that, which is just like it's. I think we just need to relax right now. We need. We need. I feel like we've been talking way too much yeah, in the first four and, and thirty. Let's just, let's just get. Let's just let's just start in. this get interview, in. man. Okay, but before we do, real quick, yeah. I need frozen thawed rats, or you know, what do I do about that? I know you go to www.coldbladdercafe.com for the freshest and bestest. You want your day one pinks? You want your damn mammoths? Stephen, are we going to reveal Stephen what is going to be bigger than a mammoth, or is that still a secret? 
Well, we're, it's in the works. It's one of our genetic pro projects we're working on, but um, whale shark rats. Whale shark rats. Well, seven hundred grams oh, plus. My whale God, rats. I forgot what the fuck that name was because I was trying to say it in the trap talk. What's, what's bigger than a mammoth? A whale shark. A whale, so shark. A whale shark. Whale shark. So guys, get ready. Well shark fucking style type rats to feed really, really big snakes. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> if you got eggs, <clears throat> I know when they got eggs, when I got eggs. I got some whale shark rats. <laughs> Sim container. Sim containers, right. We, not, container. we got eggs. They go inside a scent box, perfect humidity, and all that 100% amazing stuff. Um, guys, Gus is in Texas, in town, visiting and he's out of Costa Rica. I'm giving you guys tonight Quetzal Dwyer from fucking Costa Rica. What's up, Quetzal? How, how are you, my man? Yeah, can't yeah. complain. Can't complain, man. Um, you're over there in Texas. We, I was just talking before we went live. You're just, you know, you're in town for a few days. You take off the 24th, man. But how's everything all around, man? How, we're super excited to have you. And, you know, we definitely have a lot of questions and stuff to pick your brain. But overall, like, how's everything on your end? How's everything with everything that everyone's going through? Everything good or what's up? Oh, uh, it's uh, good. It's uh, really kind of good here as far as breeding. We bred a lot of stuff, but uh, they cool, can't man. ship the COVID. Uh, right. Not making any money. So uh, I'd be lying if I said that was all good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm in it for the critters, so it's uh, you know I hatch out some uh, baby stenophries a couple of days ago, so uh, definitely didn't cry myself to sleep. <laughs> okay, are, are you guys? Are you, what's that, Des? What is that? Oh, that's uh, it's a it's a Central American bushmaster. Okay. It's, wow. Hey, we got two bushmasters in Costa Rica. We got blackheads and Central American ones. Those are those are the more common of the two, but those are the more. Uh, or they're more common in the wild. They're not more common in captivity, but because they're uh, they're a little trickier than uh, than the blackheads. Yeah, I have I have a small request. I know we just started this shit, and I'm sorry, man. But can, is there is there a possibility where we could say the other name before the scientific name? Just so oh, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. I'm slow. I, I feel like I was doing. I thought I, I was in my head. I was like, "There's no way I fucking know." I was like, "I guarantee they know," and they're all excited. But no, Desiree was like, "What is that?" So, whew, all no, right, can, cool. Hey. Hey. All right, I push can, I the Spanish names too. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Because you know Spanish is something you're familiar with. You're in Costa Rica, right? Uh, yeah, a little. <laughs> <laughs> Fluent. So you know, being in Costa Rica, I mean, do you travel a lot other other than you know where you live, or are you just is that is that where you you know you're there most of the time? Good in good times. Uh, good times. I do. I've been uh, been all over the world. I've been in everywhere in South America except Chile and Argentina and Uruguay. I've been in Indo. I've been in Solomon Islands a couple times. Uh, uh, New Guinea, West Africa, India. Damn. Um, yeah, all all throughout Central America and the Caribbean. Yeah, New Caledonia. That was a great trip. No, yeah, I've been. Jeez. Yeah, no, just I to get wondering, you know, the, the Dave Kaufman did a um, he did a, a YouTube video there, and he was with me. And I'll let you guys take a wild guess who was the one who found all the stuff. <laughs> I know we yeah. working man. I'm not saying anymore, but uh, oh, I'll let you guys God. that out on you. <laughs> hmm. I think Desert right. figured it out. Um, so Quetzal, <laughs> you live you live in Costa Rica, man. Not too many people like you know. When Stephen told me like, yeah, this guy's based out of Costa Rica, it was like, what? Like I don't. You're the first guy I know. I that's an actual Costa Rican, you know, resident. So how did that come about? Tell us a little, you know, a little backend story on that. But yeah, when I was uh, when I was like 22, I was at uh, at an IHS, and my uh, the lease of my apartment was about up. So half jokingly, I said to Jim Pether, uh, who has got a reptile park in the Canary Islands, I was like, "Hey, what do you say I come and work with you? You know, the lease of my apartment's about up." And he was like, "Yeah, come on over, but uh, you know, give me two months because you know there's not uh, not really going to be anything going on animal wise for a couple of months." So I went over there. I learned learned to speak Spanish. Um, and that's when I decided it's a pretty nice life, you know, having people pay to come and look at your collection, keeping stuff outdoors. Wow. Um, you know, and the climate does does most of the work. So, uh, you know, I decided I want, obviously I can't do that in Canary Island, but uh, um, I looked for a country to do that in. And I'd grown up with some guys from Costa Rica, so um, they took me down there and we got the leapfrog, all the tourist hustle bullshit, uh, you know, because I was with local guys. And, uh, yeah, slowly but surely made it happen. 
Yeah. Fuck, dude. So you've been there for how long now? It's going on 24 years. Whew. Yeah, it's quite a while. Steven! You can only work with at home. <laughs> Steven, Costa Rica, Lauren, I've been alive. Yeah, that, right? Quetzal, anytime someone says like 20 something years or anything more than 15 years, I look at Steven. <laughs> He wasn't even around yet. Like he, this guy, you know, and, and this kid's definitely legend. He's le he's a legend for his age, but like he wasn't even here yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Still a knucklehead was in, you know. <laughs> no, I was a I was an egg, not a sperm. <laughs> yeah, you were just a dream at that point, bro. Damn. Only so twenty four years. You know, obviously, you've, you, have you been at the same place for a while? Like, are you like, you know, what what's your what's your what's your place like? Yeah. The, the uh. I went down there specifically to do a reptile park, bought a piece of land, built a house. Um, I did all the house myself because the idea was to make it all, make all the mistakes with the house because that's less important than uh, making mistakes with the zoo. Um, so you figure out like where the rain falls and where the sun hits and all that, all that type of stuff. Right. Uh, and it's uh, it's semi outdoors. You know, there's uh. There's some like the lizards and the turtles are completely outdoors, but the snakes are in a uh, covered structure. It's got a retractable uh, roof um, attached to a boat winch, so okay. you, we can crank it open to let uh, let the right amount of sun and the right amount of uh, rain in. Uh, the humidity, I'd say, is the biggest enemy down there. Oh, you never oh. worry about too uh, too little humidity up here. We, we worry about too much of it. Oh shit. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say. I was like, it's definitely not because you need it. I mean, that's for sure. It's because it's probably yeah. too much. Wow. Okay. Yeah, some stuff we excel with, and some stuff uh, we don't do well with. It's right. uh, you know, pretty much limited to like uh, rainforest stuff and uh, stuff from tropical dry forest. You mm -hmm. know, like stuff beaded lizards. You know, they're not from the habitat per se that I live in. But uh, yeah, we do real well with those. We hatch out loads of those every year. Mm -hmm. So at your park, what percentage of the stuff you have would is native versus you know exotic to Costa Rica? I'd say sixty. Okay. Yeah, there's lots of lots of amusing Costa Rican stuff. Lots yeah. of cool stuff. Uh, I'm not really a frog person, but there's a lot of neat frogs in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a venomous snake guy, so I got uh, there's a lot of venomous snakes there to work with. Oh yeah. Uh, we got a lot of uh, I like I like lizards as well. Big lizards, big lizards, venomous snakes, big colubrids, and water turtles are what I really like. All the fun shit. Yeah, yeah all the fun. So you know, being the fact that you say you like <clears throat> you like venomous and, and you know a lot, what are some of the things you like you know herping or running into in Costa Rica? Well, a bushmaster is always the thrill. That's always a big thrill. Hell yeah! Uh, I like those a lot. I like the tree vipers, I like the triacus. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of snakes in my area. So those are pretty common. You can go out in a boat and find those on any any given day. I'm gonna pull this. Up. I'm gonna pull this up for you real quick, Quetzal. If you could kind of like tell me, I hope to God this is the right thing, by the way. But if you could tell me, like <clears throat> primarily where you're at here in Costa Rica. Yeah, it's on it's on the southern Pacific coast, about okay. uh about a quarter of the way up from uh, the Panamanian border. Okay, so the lower you're in the you're close to Panama then. Uh, yeah, fairly close, north of the Osa Peninsula. Um, wow. Yeah, my town is my town is on uh, the town closest to me is on uh, is on the map. It's uh, Dominical. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, I see that. All right, um, what what's the more common tourist like? You know, when people want to come and visit and stuff, where's all that at? Uh, most of that is in northern Costa Rica. Okay, but I mean. We get a we get plenty of tourists there. It's a famous the famous surfing beach. Oh, bitching! I come from all over the world to surf there. And then did you choose I that location? Wanted to go to Costa Rica. Was that like because you knew there was a tourist location or you know attraction there that it would draw attention to your zoo? Um, yeah. I mean that's that's part of the equation. You know, you need to oh, it's, you need to make money. You know, that's that's a yeah, reality. Yeah. Anyone who says different is already rich. So, <laughs> Fact. Um, but uh. <laughs> um, yeah, at the time it was affordable. Now it's very expensive, uh, but it's uh, you can't be too remote either because it's uh, right. you know you you got to be able to get supplies and uh, uh, you got to have a hospital close by and you got to be dealing with glaciers and stuff like that. So you can't be you can't be too remote. Mm -hmm. 
Are there any major like climate differences or, you know, as far as like storms and whatnot, like from different parts of Costa Rica, or are you kind of looking pretty uniform throughout? Oh, um, well, the, the Caribbean coast gets more rain. You know, we get a lot of rain as well. Mm -hmm. um, we get earthquakes. We get, uh, we don't really get, um, we don't really get hurricanes. Okay. Uh, and it's like where I'm at, uh, you know, I chose this spot real carefully. I'm in the hills. Um, mm -hmm. Drainage isn't a problem. Right. Um, uh, and it's like you know, there's so much, there's so much you know, landslides and stuff like that are common there from all the rain. So it's like they know what they're doing, and there's plenty of like, plenty of bulldozers on call. So it's like I've never been, never been stranded for very long. With being, yeah. you know, the tail end of hurricanes, I've been stranded for like four days and stuff. But that's okay. It's kind of fun actually. <laughs> <laughs> I like the water and you dig stuff out of the cover. Yeah, have you ever have you ever lost anything major because of the weather or like you know had like a huge you know unfortunate accident because of like something sudden that that you weren't really ready for or anything like that down there um yeah i we've had uh like i said like a lot of humidity related problems we've had there we had um we had uh typically like colubrid snakes are the first to get sick and then vipers and last to get uh to have problems from the humidity of boas and pythons Mm -hmm. With the exception of Poland python, you know, we lost several babies from uh, excessive humidity, mm -hmm. which was uh, which really sucked. But um, you said Bol you said Bolands, right? <laughs> yeah, when we bred those, we lost several of the babies from excessive humidity. I was going to kind of dip into the whole Bolands because you know, you know, reading reading. Um, do you know who Ari is, by the way? Just just <laughs> quick, quick. I mean, yeah, I, I have this guy's book. Um, he had a crazy adventure over. You know, on a crazy area where bowling. Cut. Anyways, I don't know if you know him or not, but what could be a real goofball. <laughs> I just said, you know, the fact. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, snap! Who was that? Who was that? Was that him? I don't think that was him. Like anyway. his kid or something. It looked like it. it looked like yeah. his uh, sponsor or something. <laughs> Um, anyways, so in relation to what I'm talking about here, humidity looked like something that was a really big part of what he was experiencing and going into was like wet, wet, wet. It was all wet. So, I mean, does that go is, – Bowen, is it not doing good with a lot of humidity in Costa Rica or what's going on with that? Well, what it is is like – it's like a lot of people don't understand it's not so much it's a, a reptile's habitat that's important. It's the microhabitat is uh is a lot more important than you know okay where bolands live in the wild it's very rainy it rains every day uh they probably get more rain there than we get but you know they live in dry holes so they come out and bask and then they'll go into their holes uh but uh you know during the uh during the super rainy season there's like um there's a lot of air humidity, and you know, just recently we hooked up. Uh, we got fans all over the place in the breeding area, and that that, that has helped. Oh wow! Uh, but yeah, we asked the Bolans, we didn't have that. Hmm. Now, are you frequently hatching out Bolans? What's what's like? Tell, tell us a little bit of your experience with uh, breeding Bolans, and you know, having success rate of hatching them. All right. Well, yeah, we only did it once. I mean, we did several things. Uh, Several things that very few people do. Uh, you know, we got them in an indoor outdoor enclosure. Uh, it's in so indoors air conditioned. Uh, the um, I shot up the females' food with liquid calcium uh, during the breeding season, or uh, and uh, I think the second time I'm almost positive I killed her by overdoing that. But you live and learn. You gotta. Yeah, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Who's that guy next to you? Do you think he knows anything about Bolins or like you know? I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's bring him in. What's up with the guy next to you right over there? Who's that guy? He's kind of creeping. <laughs> Who is it? I don't know. Oh, look, it's Ari. He does know Ari. Wow, <laughs> that's such a coincidence. Surprise. This is mind bottling. My mind's wow. trying to bottle. Holy Dude. shit. Ari Flaggle. Hi, Ari. Hey, what's up? How are you guys? What's up, man? Hey, Just man. Just hanging out with uh, your friend? Is this your friend here? Yes, it is. Yes. He's my boss. That's who he is. Yeah, I'm the, <laughs> I'm the boss. He's the boss. Yeah, I'm the boss. <laughs> Ari, man. Hell yeah. Ari flagged with the building, man. What's yeah, going on? Too. We're so glad. I knew there was going to be a round two. I didn't know it was going to be this epic, though. This is pretty heavy. I'm not going to lie. 
Um, so yeah, Ari, we're talking about Bolins right now. I wanted to get you in this involved you in in the Bolins because um, you know, you, you, what this is your second or third year pairing Bolins now, or what's what what year are we on now? Bol uh, if you trying to tenth, make this happen, tenth year I think. <laughs> is it really your tenth year? Oh uh, no, I, I every year I try. Every year I try. Okay, so this is something yeah. you've been trying to. Even this is something you've been going at for quite a while then. Oh yeah, I've been I've been I've been working with them since the late nineties. Okay. And uh, just working with uh, different ideas and you know formulas and you know you know uh, good luck charms you know whatever you know all that the you know, rain dances yeah rain dance you know I put a little <laughs> on you know stuff like that but yeah. so um, Quetzal a really nice guy of you to to hire someone who's been failing at bringing bowlings for all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't like what I mean. What do you think? What do you, what do you think? No, what do you think of that? No, I'm just saying because like Quetzal's done it. He's done it. So tell me about that. Uh, like, no, it was I, I. I was incredibly happy for Quetzal, obviously, uh, with that achievement because I mean, it's an, an incredible achievement to be able to reproduce them, as you guys know, and and the people that have been able to do it too. But I mean, I mean, so Quetzal not only you know. Be, was able to reproduce them, but he's done something that nobody else has done with the species. So he produced twins from an egg on his ball and eye. He, wait, he produced what twins? You said the golden. Right there. Yeah. He said twins. Did he I say twins? twins? Yeah, he had twins. Twins, two and yeah. one egg. Two yeah. and one egg. That means. So yes, one, very one egg, two snakes. One egg, two yeah. snakes. Perfect. And they, they, they thrive. They, they, they those two are good. Where are they at? Tracking no, the, those are the way. You know, like for whatever reason, the last part of a snake to develop is like the, the um, the tail, and so their tails and like reproductive organs weren't completely developed. <sighs> Fuck. I don't know why that is, but uh, they didn't, they didn't they didn't do well. I think one of them might have what eaten once or twice, but they couldn't. They weren't. They weren't fully enough to develop, full, full well developed enough to pass waste. Uh, if you were, if any of you were to guess what that could have been, I mean, is it just shit luck? You think there was an issue in the incubation? Like, what, what do you think? No, no, that's like you know, when humans have twins, it's like there's not, it happens. Yeah, right. But because of that, the, because of the twins, is why they developed. They weren't able to develop to full right. thriving animals. Is what you're saying? Right, right. Because everything else in that clutch uh, came out perfect. Damn. How many total in the clutch? I think it was uh, 17. Oh, my Lanta. 17? Yeah, it was a big clutch. The female wasn't big either. She was about as big around as an apple. Hmm. How old was she? Well, five oh. years. Oh, five years on the dot. Hmm. Five years. That's not too old. What about yeah, the male? We, we male? Monster female in the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, that he has in the shed over here. Or in, the, in, the shed. in the shed. Yeah, yeah in really, my shed. <laughs> in a customized shed, a very yeah. comfortable shed. Um, yeah. Ari, because you just moved, right? You moved not too long ago. Yeah, right? uh, I moved about uh, five, five and a half months now. Okay. How was the whole transition and stuff? Everything good? Everything's like, you know. Okay. All the animals and all that stuff are fine. But it, as, as you guys know, moving is terrible, you know, especially, you know. Right. Moving out of state, but luckily I didn't have to. It was just like three hours away from where I was at, so it was just, you know, it's just a pain in the ass. But you do what you got to do, you know. Oh, Opportunities yeah. that don't happen often, so you do it. And what was the opportunity? Please tell us, sorry. Oh wow, the opportunity. So, so Quetzal approached me with this uh, fantastic idea. It's been a, a couple of years now in the making, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking about it for a while. And uh, he approached me about uh, having me come on board with him doing a, a brand new facility out here in Texas that's just going to be like, like basically blow everybody's mind. It's going to be just an incredible um, uh, public exhibition for people uh, slash breeding conservation. Um, and, and I and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm there. I don't even need to, you know, you don't even need to ask. I'll, I'll just, you know, put in my two weeks now. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's so sick. Um, Come on. <laughs> Seriously, it's like without the you know, it's like you can you can only do so much remotely and you need somebody with an eye for animals 
you can't have like a contract to build something and say, okay, this is uh this is gonna be a snake enclosure. Mm-hmm. No you man, know, you gotta. I, you, I don't think you could have found anyone better than Ari. Ari's like he. This dude knows his enclosures. I I, I admire all his enclosures, and you know, the thing is, like, you're uh, that, you, that, appreciate that, man. Your Bolin's enclosures and stuff, man. I mean, it just you know, I I know it's gonna happen for you at one point, but I'm super surprised yeah. that it hasn't because it's, how fucking dialed in you are. Uh, we're gonna do it. Yeah, I feel real confident. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna replicate what uh, Quetzal did, um, and and with my ideas also, you know, we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be do- Bolins are gonna be the not even the cream of the crop of the things that we're gonna be successful with reproducing reproducing rather with some of the uh, the plans and ideas we've got. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of interesting ideas. Like we're gonna do a two story enclosure for uh, Salvadori. That crocodile monitors, wow! You know, with like a like for uh for yeah. observation. Yeah, let's talk about that. Somewhere. Yeah, so how how big in total will the, the whole enclosure be? The two story enclosure. So the length the length of it is uh I believe sixty feet. Yeah, sixty feet. Sixty feet, and the height is uh, close to thirty feet. Damn! So this is and like an actual like Jurassic Park enclosure. Real. <laughs> yeah. It is going to be about five uh, full-size trees that are going to be hollowed out, so we'll be able to have uh, feeding um, access to go up and down the trees at different levels, hmm. and also being able to monitor nesting sites uh, up at elevated levels. And we're going to be doing a lot of uh, uh, research-related stuff with that too, just being able to uh, yeah. test out different nesting ideas and feeding ideas and things like that. So that's just going to be one of the. Wow. the you're going to be blown away with when you walk into this facility. Yeah, one of the other things too, it's like a lot of a lot of croc monitors in captivity. The leading cause of death for croc monitors is uh, is coronary failure, and that's from them turning into people turning them into big slobs. <laughs> and that uh, that's not only you know kills them like that, but it's like the females don't get enough exercise. In my opinion, is like the muscles aren't well de- well enough developed for them to push out the eggs, and that's wow. why a lot of females die egg bound as well. But we're going to do away with all that because there's going to be several trees in the enclosure that are not connected to uh, each other. And we're going to feed them off of different trees. And um, so they're going to be obligated to move. And we got a bunch of ideas for enrichment, you know, just to, uh, just to make them move. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so the, right. the first question that kind of popped in my mind was with nesting in a, in a huge enclosure like that, like you could, I, the first thing in my mind is like, damn, I'd hate to miss a clutch. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking, obviously, you guys have that. So the solution for that, if you can yeah. so, talk about that, what are you guys thinking about? Yeah, so I've been real fortunate enough uh, to be able to uh, re- uh, to produce multiple clutches of croc, yeah. monitor, uh, croc monitor eggs in the past. I had a full term uh, die uh, this early this year, uh, which was a ball buster, but. It was a still a pretty sweet achievement. Yeah, it's knowing, still the home stretch. Yeah, knowing yeah. that I did it right. Yeah. So um, there's a lot. There's definite behavior for females when they're gravid uh, and approaching uh, becoming gravid too. So those are the, the real key factors that we're going to be uh, watching. Uh, I mean, it's you you know when she's gravid or she's getting ready to dump eggs. Uh, so um, yeah. uh, it, it'd be really exciting to see just how the behavior changes, being able to have all that space and all that different kind of stimuli in there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, set them with like arboreal nest boxes too, because most likely in the wild, that's where they nest is in tree hollows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you know, from what I, from what little is known about them in the wild, you know, everyone Ari and uh, others who I talk to who have, uh, um, you know, who are in the know for that, um, they say they live in like uh, basically swamp forest. Um, so that's they either migrate to uh to lay the eggs or they lay them in tree hollows. Because it's like there's no way like uh, they lay them on the that you that in that habitat you know uh, eggs that take what like six months or so to hatch would survive on the on the forest. Yeah. Um, I have a question real quick to you and uh, Ari Quetzal. Um, how big of a part does food cycling work with any of your pairings or stuff like that? I mean, is it is food cycling really something big for you guys or any of oh, you guys? Yeah. I gave I gave a talk uh, you know years back at an IHS for that on that subject. Um, the scenario was that you know like when you're breeding temperate stuff, you know okay it hibernates, it hibernates over the winter, and you know that's <laughs> that's pretty pretty simple. 
Um, but you know, with tropical stuff, it's a lot. It's a lot more complex. It's like often it's related to, uh, um, you know, food, or mm-hmm. sometimes by season. And it's like even stuff. You know, we're we're conditioned in our minds to think of like hibernation and cooling and stuff like that. And there's been a couple of cases like you know in those uh, what do they call them ackies? Yeah, the ridgetail monitors. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people hibernate those and they breed them. But then they did a study. I think it was someone in Germany did it. And it's like that works not because they're being cooled. It works because they're not feeding during the time when they're, quote, hibernated. <clears throat> Got mm-hmm. it. There's another lizard we work with in CR called a uh, uh, gala wasp. Okay. Um, it looks like a giant uh, diploglossus monotropus. It looks like a giant fire skink. Mm-hmm. And uh, their, their uh, reproductive cycle appears to be tied to, uh, to uh, land crab migrations. Because the females need a calcium spike to uh, to produce good eggs and to ovulate, so there's, there's all types of stuff like that uh, goes on with tropical stuff. But uh, yeah, the tropical uh, some of the the boas, the Pearl Island boas that we work with and stuff, the way we get those to ovulate is just double up the food in the fall when the birds are migrating to uh, um, you know replicate that. Any uh, any chondros or boils you work with down in Costa Rica? Oh yeah, yeah. We work with. Uh, we got a lot of uh, a lot of basins, a lot of uh, emeralds. Uh, chondros. They're not big enough to breed yet. We got uh, annulated boas, Pearl Island oh, boas. Uh, yeah, Corallus ruchenbergeri. All right. Uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. The other, uh, just like a couple of weeks ago, I paired up my uh, Corallus bait size, so I striped emeralds. Um, and uh, as soon as I put the male in, you know, the female did the. Uh, the the tree bow equivalent of opening her legs she came over and she smelled them and then she just dropped her tail down like a foot down of her tail she wants it and he went right away cool <laughs> nobody uh you know that's a snake that a lot of people work with but uh, i've never i've never heard anyone talk about that behavior before she was a hoe for show <laughs> yeah she was a hoe for show Oh, yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of courtship is, is female female instigated you know bushmasters do like uh they have equivalent for opening their legs as well. It's like when they get in a position, like it looks like a question mark. And you know, people have shown me pictures. It's like, oh, my Bushmaster female is in a question mark position. I think everything's okay. I was like, go out and buy a new car because you're in. Yeah, <laughs> that's game time right yeah. there. You're in. It's on. Oh shit, man. Uh, <laughs> some other some other stuff like the Solomon Island spiny monitors, the Varanus spinulosis. Um. I've seen uh, I've seen females instigate the courtship. So this is kind of funny story. I'll take a second to tell you that my right hand man is a Belgian guy named Rule. Okay. You know, who's very very quiet and soft spoken. And we're watching the spinulosis female like following the male around and uh, like nudging him and you know all over him. And then like when he finally starts paying attention to her, you know, she runs away. And he, this guy who said like five words all day, just looks over at me and he's like, "Bitch." <laughs> What? <laughs> oh man! That's it. That's all he said to you. Huh? Like <laughs> Was he calling you a bitch? No, fuck no, no fuck you. Happened. But now he's calling the monitor a bitch. He's like bitch. <laughs> that must have been like the fifth or possibly sixth word he said all day. Oh my god. <laughs> Effective word, you know. Well placed. Yes. Yeah, it's on point, you know. <laughs> A few other words out there. Um <laughs> Quetzal, so your basins, right? You know, we're obviously we're huge fans. We fucking love basins. Um how did you inquire? You know, that wow, well, first off, how big's your group of basins? How, how many are you working with? Oh uh, shit. How many do I have? <laughs> I've got like um jeez. I got six adults and uh like another uh Probably another six ba- six babies and yearlings. Okay. Oh my god! So you're raising them up for the most part, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay, these uh, the ones I produced this year. Uh, those will be for sale. But you know, the group I you know for a couple yeah they we they breed every other year for us. That's I mean, good. I think like with most live bearers, with the exception of like uh, lancehead vipers. And uh, hognose vipers, you're better off letting them letting them rest a year. Damn! Can you ship to the United States? Just curious. 
Yeah, well, I normally do. That's a bit of a sour subject right now because uh, I'm sitting on you know, literally hundreds of hundreds of snakes and lizards right now that I can't ship because Delta uh, is the only airline that'll take um, take venomous. Uh, so uh, I can't I can't make any shipments until Delta starts flying to Costa Rica again. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we've been uh, experiencing issues with that too. Shipping stuff with Delta, it's been. Very frustrating. I mean, is there any end in sight with that? Like, do you have any insight on that? I heard no. September they were going to go back to daily flights to certain places. Costa Rica was on there. At least oh, really? Was. Yeah. Oh, that's music to my ears. I mean, it's it would make sense because the flight that uh, the flight that I use is from L.A. It's the only direct flight from L.A. And uh, that would make sense that, you know, because there's a lot of money in that part of the country. So. But I mean, California is not like the way it is right now with the COVID is they're uh, they're not uh, they're letting uh, people in from certain states that have their act together with the COVID, which is like, you know, New York and New Jersey, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Colorado, I think as well. Um, but uh, yeah, California is not on the list yet and neither is Georgia. So uh, I mean, I, I, I don't think Delta is going to start flying until uh until uh until those states get uh get yeah, cleared that would make sense yeah I, i'd agree with that yeah i have to i mean i couldn't get anything from delta to san diego i gotta go to all the way to la to pick it up this saturday yeah probably i guess you're right as far as them sending shit i think it's only to big major fucking facilities or something like that where like you said where the real like where all the money's coming in at yeah, just I mean, if I could get them to the states, I could work something out. You know, there's brokers in, in Florida, there's brokers in uh, in California. You know, it's uh yeah. Anyway, it's a sour subject. So <laughs> well, day by day by day, let's see what happens. You know, we'll fucking take it. Yeah. You know, that's all we can do. Um, you doing all right over there, Harry? Harry, you look you look pretty happy. Yeah, chilling. So Ari, right, let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about the zoo, okay? Um, sure. Hold the phone. Yeah, yeah, I'll hold the phone. Hold the phone. Soon. Yeah, poor yeah, fucking yeah. Spetzel. He's been holding it this entire time. Um, yeah. So Ari, right, let's, let's. I want to get a little bit inside about the zoo and whatnot. I know you're, you're super excited to talk about it. So let's 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 speak on it. Let's. What's going on with the zoo? What are you excited to talk about? And let us know. So oh yeah, so I mean this facility first off is just going to be incredible. I mean, everybody says, you know, all oh, these new zoos and all this stuff. But no, this is legitimately going to be something that nobody has seen before. Um, the practices that we're going to be implementing um, and the techniques, the ideas, uh, the species that we'll be having, the displays, it's going to be just uh, fantastic. Uh, it's going to be set up for uh, symposiums out here as well um, so people can come out. Um, and it'll also be, I mean, obviously be open to the public so people can come in daily uh, and then we'll be reproducing animals, um, you know, for, for our stock and, and uh, shipping out to other facilities and whatnot, too. So um, and then the uh, the collection of animals we'll be working with, it's, it's not just going to be like ridiculously rare species. It's going to be common species, but set up in the way that they should be set up so that you can see them behave normally and uh, observe all these incredible interactions and behaviors and whatnot, too. But, I mean, we're also going to have some pretty fucking hardcore species, too. I mean, like, you know, like Mang Vipers and Fees Vipers and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, walking into a room with a 60-foot by 30-foot high, you know, croc monitor enclosure is going to be pretty impressive. So. I'm excited for that. And uh, being a two-level... Um, so it's going to be really great. And, uh, we're going to focus really heavily on conservation also, um, and just educating the public on, you know, what we're doing and what, you know, what the future is and, and, you know, and, and how they can get involved and what they, you know, and, you know, bring their kids here. We'll do night camps and all that stuff. So it's going to be, it's going to be a really incredible place. Um, and open for, uh, I hope to, um, in the next couple of years also be able to, um, do like a lot of, uh, like I said, kind of symposiums and like events going on too, and then for expansions as well. Mm -hmm. you so have be, you have to be a kid for the night camps. Sorry, Stephen. No, <laughs> not at all. All right, cool. You get a little goodie bag with a headlamp and some candy and all that shit. You'll be good to go. <laughs> Let's do it. Del Lars, we're doing it. Yeah. Del Lars, I can't. So, our, um, 
from your past zoological experience, what what practices or experiences are, are you taking with you that you learned that were positive? And then what are things you're trying to avoid based on what you've seen in the past starting your own place? Great question. Yeah, real good question. So I learned, I, I mean, I so I, I have a, uh, 11 years working in a professional AZA facility and I learned a lot of really useful information. I learned a lot of information that wasn't useful and didn't really apply to anything you know, that was beneficial at all. So I'm taking things like, you know, quarantine procedures, how to set up certain things um, on that level and being able to incorporate it into this new facility. And then, I mean, Quetzal has an incredible ability and incredible knowledge base um, with what he does and, and just being able to work um, alongside with him is just going to be uh, an opportunity that I just couldn't pass up. So that will be incorporated into it. Yeah. There's my ass kiss right there. Yeah. Ass kiss. yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Reach, around, yeah, right. reach around. Number yeah, one. Yeah. All right. Reach around. I'll pass. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So there, there are a lot of things that, uh, that I'm going to be bringing to it. And then a lot of things that I've seen that I've had to, had to do in that AZA kind of setting that were completely tossing out and, and correcting in a, a more functional way. Uh, like we're, uh, simplicity is usually the the best answer um, mm -hmm. uh, doing things like this. So, I mean, Ari, obviously you've, you know, you've done tons of research even probably before, you, you know, you, you joined, you know, Quetzal's team with the zoo, but like, you know, I mean, stuff behind stuff like this that you're doing and whatnot, like it was this all year, like, are these all your ideas? Are you, are you kind of collabing with anybody? Like, cause this is yeah, fucking so like, so, like, the way it works is, like, right now, like, I mean, Quetzal's, you know, he's living in, in Costa Rica majority of the time. And it's like, you know, we're we're having daily conversations multiple times a day on how, you know, we should set this up, how we should do this. Or, hey, this could be a really good idea. Could we implement this in where it could work? And um, and then a lot of it is just like, hey, man, uh, I trust you. Go run with it. Uh, send me a picture when you're done. You know, um, so, uh, you know, which is incredible on itself because I'm I'm building I'm, I'm helping him build a zoo, you know, um, zoo sad. dream. Right. There it is. There, seriously, get your shirts if there's any left. I'm just saying, don't get caught. <laughs> don't leave. Um, yeah, there's not yeah. many. Yeah, um, dude, fuck, dude, there it is. I mean, what's awesome is like how the one thing I love about this fucking hobby is like people could have like outrageous dreams. Right. But like all it takes is knowing the right person. Like in, in everything become a reality just like that, just because of all who you know, you know what I mean? And that's why it's like I always cherish people who people who have leg, legit relationships and whatnot and fucking people who just thrive off each other. Like me and Steven only became tight because he met Forrest and and like I, you know, Forrest was fucking somebody I looked up to. We both looked up to him. So it's just, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just nuts. It's just crazy. And then obviously Ari and Forrest brought me and you together. You know what I mean? So it's, it's insane. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really incredible. I mean, it's going to be a... Uh... It will be a showstopper, and it'll be a de it'll be a destination. Like people will be, uh, what's that? Oh yeah, there it is. Ooh, all right, all right. Damn, yeah. he caught one of those. Those are like super, super like private edition right there. Those are oh, yeah. sick. Uh, that was Lit on Sorry, that was for you. Yeah, I got I got yours, MJ. <laughs> huh? I got yours, MJ. That's what all it right. was. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, but, my, yeah, my, my, it's, my it's, right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. It'll be, uh, so it, like I said, it's going to be a destination, but it's going to be a place for people to really like reestablish their roots of why we love doing this. You know, that's yeah. what it is. Appreciating everything that encompasses herpetology, herpeticulture, biology. You know, it's the environment, it's the animals, it's the behavior, everything. So, and, and that's what we're trying to breed, uh, try to bring rather uh to the public and then you know private sector as well so it'll be open to everybody and uh, yeah. collaborating and audience and all that stuff it's just going to be uh fantastic what part in texas are you in again is it yeah all right i'm gonna switch on to the uh we're in uh we're right outside of austin johnson city it's called yeah i'm gonna jump on to Johnson city okay are you having lots of indoor and outdoor enclosures like combination yeah, so so the majority of our enclosures are all indoor. However, we have natural skylights set in place for everything. And we also have indoor outdoor access for certain species, uh, depending on the seed as well. Um, yeah. 
So, um, uh, raising babies outdoors. Oh yeah, and raising babies outdoors as well. All right. Um, That's awesome. I'm gonna jump onto the. I'm gonna jump on through on my phone because Quetzal's phone's about ready to die. Yeah, my phone. I had some late. Whoa! <laughs> All right then. Yeah, so I think I should be. Uh... All right, exit out work? of that. Exit. Quetzal just turned. That. Just scared. Yeah, Going to skip out. Okay. All right. Oh my God! There's too much. <laughs> what? I'm confused right now. Hold on, I'm gonna kick him out. Let me kick this fool out real quick. All right. Two seconds. I'm like, what? Kick guest out. He's out. All right. All right, here we go. Yeah, okay. I'm in the show. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, it's no, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm not. Here I am. Hey, yeah. hey, guys, give me a second. Plug, plug, my, plug my phone in again. We had, I had some phone issues the last couple of days that I don't want to. No, you're actually good. This actually, yeah. I, I mean, no, no offense, Questel. It's actually better quality on uh, Ari's phone for whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know so, if Costa Rica gets yeah, iPhone yeah. 11. Yeah, you guys <laughs> all right, hear me, everything? Yeah. Yes. Right, cool. Yeah. So it's going to be just, it, it's going to be an incredible place. Uh, and um, it, it's going to be just, it's going to be awesome. So <laughs> what's ETA on it? Like what's like, when are we looking to where it's like, uh, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm really out. hoping. Uh, well, I mean, obviously with all the COVID stuff, because mm -hmm. construction too, that affects like building material as well. Yeah. We've been dealing with, um, but uh, I'm, I'm really hoping for the beginning of the year uh, to have like a soft open, um, and then, uh, and then go from there and then, uh, and then probably pass after the, the, the first year we open, uh, we'll do probably some, uh, phase two where we're going to do, like, we've talked about doing like a world, uh, uh, deserts of the world kind of thing. And, um, some other stuff like that too, where we can really showcase outdoor crocodilian stuff as well. Um, yeah. So, so, uh, we've kind of mentioned throughout, you know, a few of the species here and there, but, uh, I mean, are there any, like, what are some of the highlights, kind of the coolest things that you guys are going to be having there, aside from, you know, croc monitors and bowlins pythons, of course? Oh, we're gonna have, I mean, we got mangs. Uh, we're going to have the yeah. Arviocula, the Ethiopian okay. vipers, uh, Zemiops, which is the Fees or Phase viper, however you mm -hmm. want to pronounce it. Yeah. Um, some um, really cool, uh, obscure little lizards. I've been really enjoying working these uh, Phronocephala mustaceous, those agamids from. Um, um, from uh, the Middle East, hmm. uh, toad head agamids, uh, things like that. Um, and just some, I mean, I mean, it's, I don't want to ruin the whole thing. Yeah, no, don't, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be very, very cool. Um, uh, and then uh, focusing on like, you know, like North American swamps, uh, a Caribbean island boa enclosure, um, things like that, European stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so it'll be, uh, can be cool. So I think there's gonna be a pretty heavy venomous influence in the facility. Yeah, right? we're gonna have a lot of venomous stuff in there. Uh, I wouldn't say it's gonna be heavy venomous. We're gonna have like we're gonna be pulling a lot of key species that we really want to work with. There's uh, mm. Nichii, Serratophora, uh, some different species of crotalus, like some of the rattlesnakes, um, a lot of arboreal vipers and things like that too, um, and. Your, your, your basic things too, but we're going to have a really nice creation uh, <coughs> of a uh, uh, variety of species that, that people can really observe and see. Wow. I can't wait. It's going to be super sick. Yeah, how, big, be how, how big exactly is it roughly? Like how many like acres or whatever? So, you know? uh, so we're on 10 acres okay. um, and uh, we've got uh, two buildings uh, nearing completion. We have our, our front uh, first building, which uh, houses our three quarantine rooms, um, a housing room, obviously, you know, gift shop and stuff like that for the public. Uh, and then we have our temperate building, which is all temperate species. Um, and it's got uh, 20, I believe, one, two, three, four. Yeah, 20 large enclosures. They're about... 20 feet by eight feet tall by five feet deep, I think roughly. And I, I might be butchering that up. Um, large aqua terrariums and such. And then in the main structure, which is the tropics, uh, the tropical building, um, we're going to have a, it's a, a two levels uh, bottom level. We're going to have all these large canisters that are going to be fabricated for enclosures. Uh, and then there'll be an upper level too, which gives you vantage points to obviously see the Salvadori um enclosure from the top and then the bottom so a lot of fish a lot of turtles, stuff like that um and then just you know room for expansion uh, uh you know down the road 
Are you doing mammals? Good question. Uh, probably not. Uh, we might maybe something small, but it's mostly going to be reptiles. Maybe some, maybe a little bit of uh, birds in there. I mean, we're going to have birds and stuff with some of the vipers, but I mean, it's obviously because of the feeding behavior, you know, like uh, the mang vipers, you know, feeding off of birds in the wild. So we can yeah. do that, but we might have a couple things. I keep trying to, you know, twist Quetzal's arm because I need cassowary. So. You don't have to twist my arm now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Costa, wait, you don't know what those are, Des? No. Oh, what my. Is... Hold on. Like, like, velociraptors, literally. They will freaking kill yeah, you. How about that? They are nuts. Yeah, um, you, want, you want to explain to uh, Des real quick what a cassowary is? Yeah, it's a big-ass bird. It's like an emu, but it's uh, it's got this huge crest on its head, and it will. Uh, let's see. Okay. A... Yeah, 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 yeah so where it is. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Somebody died in Florida. An old dude who's kept him for years died. He got gutted. And uh, yeah, and yeah, he, he RIP to that dude. But yeah, he got gutted. And and, did, and you want to know why he got gutted, Des? I'm going to show you why he got gutted. Because these things have crazy talons that literally look like like if Michael Myers could be a bird, like this would be it. You know what I mean? Because this thing's no joke. Like, look how big that thing is right there. I think it's sever a neck. Pretty gnarly, right? So yeah. Yeah. Wessel, what up? Yeah, we'll get, a, get a pair. Uh, yeah, you should get a pair of those for sure. Look at that thing. Oh yeah, there it is. But yeah, it's mostly going to be reptiles and fish. Um, but I mean, who knows down the road? I mean, uh, you know, we might yeah, do some yeah. birds maybe that's... a sloth or two. A sloth? Yeah. Right there, right there at the entrance. That'd be sick. You know, just. <laughs> So I first worked with a sloth once when I was working at a, 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 a reptile shop and they had one come in and I was like expecting it to be like this kind of teddy bear thing. And it was one of the strongest animals I've ever tried holding in my entire life. <laughs> yeah. Like what do you like, like, like wearing you down or what was it doing to you? Oh, wore me, wore me out, not down, wore me out. A sloth. Yeah. Slow ass motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> crazy. And uh, Tamandua put his claws through my palms of my hands, like stigmata too. So, let me just get some monkeys. Monkeys are scary. I don't know. Yeah. No. I don't need anything that's gonna jump on my shoulder and jerk off at me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Weird. I've had wow. a couple. I've had a couple so okay. Why did we go there? Yeah. I knew he was gonna go there at least once. Yeah. MJ was gonna go there. <laughs> okay. Bob, Bob Smith email coming very yeah. short. Yeah, be, ready, be ready for Bob Smith's uh, email. You have, are you guys going to be keeping crocodiles? Yeah, we're going to be doing um, uh, a uh, probably a small a bit of crocodilians. Not going to really heavily focus on it just because of all the space required for it. You know, obviously. Yeah. You know. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna key in some of the few species that we might really want to work with. Um, I'd really like to bring in a big salty so we could have a salty uh, for that. Um, and, and there's still talks about like what we're going to incorporate um, uh, down the road and everything like that. But yeah, I mean, we'd like to. Um, um, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah. For hey, sure. hey, Quetzal, I got to. Uh, thanks, Ari. You're amazing. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Quetzal, uh, I, I had something that popped up, you know, in my head while Ari was speaking because um, I was, was you it know, the was monkey comment. No, not the monkey comment. No, no, no. But <laughs> what do you do with what do you, you know? What you know? Any kind of like veterinarian attention and stuff like that? Are you experienced with that stuff, or like what, what's your go to when when stuff happens? You know, when shit hits oh. basically with a snake or an animal. Yeah, I'm, myself and my really? staff, we got a fair amount of experience with it. Um, okay, but uh, there is a local vet who uh, who does uh, who who does help us out. I mean, it's not like a specialized reptile vet like you would run into up here, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, the guy, the guy's definitely the guy down there has definitely helped us out a couple times. Okay, because if like is is like sewing up a monitor from like a bite a big deal, or is that something that easy that you guys can do, or like you know if like if they get into it and they you know they kind of gash them up pretty good, or like is that something that needs you know other kind of attention? Yeah, we we've done that before, and we've had a vet do it before as well. Okay, cool. I was I was just curious because you know I don't know how I don't know how the vets work down there, you know. But if you have one, that's awesome. Yeah. 
What about at the zoo that, that you guys are doing? What's what's the game plan with that? We got a there's a local guy named uh, Cord Offer, Offerman, uh, who lives maybe like 30 minutes away, and he's a friend and he's a great reptile vet. Uh, so we're gonna yeah we're gonna go with him. Okay, um, and then as far as like is is it always good or like like what's a how do you say it? Like for instance, like at the San Diego Zoo, like right if something were to happen, they kind of have like those medical you know, I guess vets or whatever on staff type of thing. Like who would be, the, who would be the go-to per wait, say, say what? No, uh, man. Oh, who's like the go-to person or like, you know, for instance, like who's the one who's, in, who's responsible for all that kind of stuff. Which I, I'm trying to say, well, well, like I said, we would have, we'd subcontract uh, that guy cord in Austin um, for okay. that. And uh, you know, most of the stuff between Ari and I, we could handle ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's like, like as far as like medicating stuff and, uh, um, you know, quarantine procedures and stuff. That's you know, we're, we're pretty well versed with that. And yeah, no monkeys and shit. You don't have to worry about people getting their fucking fingers chewed off or no, 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 no. no, no. I'm not into that. Yeah, not into monkeys. That's how you go viral. Maybe some baby tigers. Yeah, right. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> Knock yourself out. I'm a, yeah. Fuck. There's enough fucking documentary on those. You know, we're not a. <laughs> These aren't cat people, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> now, I want to ask Quetzal with you know to, to wrap up the zoo topic. What what's the main like in your head? What's the what's the end goal with this? Like, what are you looking to accomplish at the end of the day by having a zoo in Texas and having RA run it? <laughs> um, what am I looking to accomplish? Same or, as you I, know, I mean, what what would you like to go? I mean, in, you know, what's best case scenario for you? Like, what's 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 the you know, what's your motive as far as like what what is it that you want to see? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just just curious. Like, well, it's basically it's all I know how to do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, or, like, all I know how to do well, and uh, cool. <laughs> I can uh, yeah, just have people pay to look at a rep, look at a really nice reptile collection, do field work, do conservation work, breed stuff, publish. The same as I've been doing in uh, in CR for all these years. Well, it's right. time for, time for a change of scenery. Right. All right. Uh, now, if things blow up here in Texas, or when they blow up, I should say, when when, when you they say blow up, up, you mean in a good way or bad way? <laughs> in a good way, not not a COVID way. I'm talking about okay. like in a fucking in a really good like. I'm talking about sh you know shits on fire, not on fire, but like yeah. it's amazing, right? You know what I'm saying? Highly <laughs> successful. <laughs> Anyways, well, it already is. You know, for that matter, for real, 100. percent But you know, if you know when that happens, Quetzal, are you looking to maybe? stay more here in the United States or are you always going to be like you, you you checking out in Costa Rica is no, that no, no. I want to I want to uh I want to spend more time up here nice cuz 20 what 24 years you said right yeah, 10 years a long time you know so so are you uh bringing that komodo with you no, no they, wouldn't, they wouldn't they wouldn't let me do that oh shit <laughs> who can't take care of that they won't they won't that's right they won't let him do that so just continue later, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that Ryu? What's that? Who's in the background? That's oh, Ryu. You asked me. Yeah, hey, how are you? Hi. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Do you work at the zoo too? Uh, kind of, sort of, not yet, but I'm... She will. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm helping care for, you know, the future zoo animals, etc. So keeping Ari sane. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's huge. Yeah, right. Main new animal. Yeah. Blah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Main attraction. So how how excited are you with you know Ari's adventure in this? Oh, it's like a it's like a dream come true. It's like one of those things where you look back and think about when you're a kid and you're like, wow, I would have never imagined doing all this, but that was like a dream come true when I was a kid because I was always into this stuff. So wow. And then look, like you're getting into like you know, this, this dude who's into bullens and shit, like the cream <laughs> drop, like, this is crazy. Like you just, you hit the lotto girl. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> like, you go girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Hey, wait, wait, congratulations. You guys are engaged too, which is fucking huge. Oh uh, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Super congrats on that. Way to, way to seal that one up, Ari. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huge, huge. Um, good stuff, man. So, um, Quetzal, are we looking to, 
you know, I mean, like, I know we're getting dialed in and doing what we can with the with the Bolins, but are is there going to be like a, a breeding facility over in Texas as well? Are we looking to have a bunch yeah. of animal breeding? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Are 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 your Bolins going to be there, or are you keeping them? Oh yeah. At home? Oh, they yeah, are. Yeah, we're bringing we're bringing uh, a bunch of my animals on exhibit, uh, and then they'll be. I mean, obviously we're we're going to be getting uh, we're sourcing animals. Um, you know, in the U.S., obviously, to fill enclosures and, and, you know, for animals we need for stock and stuff like that. But but I have animals that are in my collection and, and Ryu's collection as well that will be going into the, the facility, too, to help out. But, yeah, the bones will be in there. And then I think Quetzal might be sending some stuff up from CR probably to put in there, too, you know. Um, can we talk about the Croctagus? Yeah, sure. <laughs> we have a pair of sure. those right now, and I have no idea what to do with them. They oh, just- you have a you have a pair of them? each other. Yeah, they have a pair. I know, yeah. I know nothing about them. I, I, I wanted to ask that uh, too, because uh, you know, obviously you've bred them now multiple times, and uh, that's something that you know we hope to do in the future. So, uh, just can you kind of explain the process in, in Costa Rica? You know, from acquiring them to reproducing them. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Let's see. Where do I begin? Okay. The husbandry is is easy. They eat anything and everything. Um. Just recently, we learned that they uh, that they eat fruit. What? They'll eat um, fruit as well. Interesting. Um, which I didn't know before. Ari was the one who figured that out. Uh, wow. There's uh, there's a couple of uh, I've, I've got a couple of populations of them. You know, there's some that I have from the upper Amazon and some from the lower Amazon. Uh, the ones from the upper Amazon live in flood forest, and those have been like a more more challenging to work with than the ones from the lower Amazon. Uh, mm-hmm. those uh, those are like more fussy about uh, reproductive. It's kind of interesting. We had those uh, you know, for years with uh, like tilapia in the water, and uh, when we pulled the tilapia out, that completely changed their behavior. The females would uh, would have like nesting territories and they'd fight hard over like, guarding the nesting territories, they'd only let males in, and the other females would have to swim underwater when they were going through their territories. Um, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but, uh, you know, most of the ones in the States now are uh, are from uh, lower Amazon stock. And those are going to be easier to breed. I mean, so you should be you should be in good shape. I got a buddy in uh, in Brazil who bred those, you know, basically in like in like 20 gallon tanks. Wow. Okay. So is the majority of the habitats should be water then? Uh, I'd say 50-50. Okay, that's mm-hmm. about what we have now. Yeah. And 50, then 50. at what ages are they breeding? Um, they're mature at about like two years. Okay. Uh, okay. It's pretty quick. What's yeah, they, a, they, mature, what? they mature pretty quickly. <clears throat> How big are they in inches when they're like supposed to be full grown? Uh I'd say I'd say like two feet. Two feet? Okay. About as, about as big around as maybe like uh like uh like a big cherry, like a cherry tomato. Oh, mm-hmm. some, they got some growth to do. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll do your guys' pair. I don't know how. No, uh, probably like, probably about fifteen months now. Yeah, because they're babies, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. I can show. I can send you a photo of our setup, Des. Please do. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, they like. They like. Oh, uh, they like it hot, and they definitely need UV. I'm sure you thought. Like- yeah. Yeah, we got one UV too. Those are definitely, definitely one of my favorite lizards. Yeah, but, I, I, I wish that we could find some way to, to make them present themselves more. They, they always seem to be either burrowed or kind of nuzzled in the water under leaves and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the one thing about the lower Amazon ones. Those are they're very shy. They're shyer than the upper Amazon ones. Mm-hmm. You uh, you recently saw, saw them out though, right? I don't know if it, really it was you, Stephen. You posted a story, or was it Jay, your worker? But it was actually out chilling by the glass. The, the, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I did too. No, I mean uh, every they now have, and every now yeah. and then they do. They, they do, you know. Right now, honestly, you kind of have to walk in the room when uh, no one's been in there for a while and kind of catch them off guard a little bit, and they see you and they'll like sit there for a second and run away. But you know, they, I mean, they're they're beautiful animals and like their their pattern really is unlike anything else. I just I wish I could see them more. But do you think that might come with age too? Like once they mature and once they're breeding, they might be a little more bold. I'd say so. Mm-hmm. It it just takes time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so are, are you keeping your adults in groups in Costa Rica? Yeah. Yeah. I keep them in groups. Okay. What's the sex ratio that you're running them at? 
Um, like one point, uh, one point two. I'll do. Oh, okay. Yeah. How, how big of enclosures are they in? Oh uh, yeah, it's it's real big. I'd say uh, I'd say like like twelve feet of land, and uh, twelve feet of land, and um, and water maybe maybe the same, a little less. I mean, there I haven't with Cayman lizards. I've been mixed lizard, mixed species exhibits because it's like you can't display something like wow. that because it's so shy. Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you think there's any sort of benefit they have from being in that mixed enclosure, or is it just purely because you have a zoo to run and you got to have something that's going to be out? Yeah, I got to have something that's going to be out. Uh -huh. um, do you recommend that we keep them together or just raise them separately and then pair them? I, I'd say I'd say you could raise them together. There's no reason not to. I mean, they're they're like a social, they're a social animal. Okay. Um, it's like you know, in the wild, when you see them, like where there's one, there's more. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not something like like you know there's like one isolated one. So yeah, there's definitely something going on with the with okay. that. I mean, I've had uh, I've had lower Amazon, I've had upper Amazon ones, males kill each other. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, some buddies of mine who have more experience with the with the lower Amazon ones have said uh, have said no, that they haven't had problems with that. But I mean, it's like um. That was that's only when they get to be adults in my experience so you know i would be i'd be careful with that mm. okay. what, what's their nesting behavior typically like and when there's multiple females are they messing with each other's nests or anything like that um no not really i mean they defend the nesting territory but it's not like it's yeah. not like one female is going to eat the other one's uh going to eat the other one's eggs okay yeah that's the mother female is not having that <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she won't let another female within, you know, within a yard of her. Yeah. Nice. Fair enough. I would be really worried. I don't know if me just overthinking stuff about them like dumping eggs in the water or something like that. <laughs> um, we've had that happen, but only um only before that was when we had the tilapia in the in the water with them. Because you know, if they live in a flood forest, it doesn't make any sense, you know, for like them to invest in making a nest if there's like these big it's either the way I read that was it's either there's a uh, either the water's not low enough for them to bother nesting, or you know they still fish in the water, so that's so that's a predator. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it as long as you have like, uh, as long as you don't have big fish in with them, and yeah. you don't have uh, you don't have uh, you have a suitable nesting place. Okay. I mean, I've never seen them dig their own holes, you know, so I wouldn't worry about a substrate. It's always like under stuff. Mm. Okay, so they're kind of just like looking for that yeah, area yeah, that's already it's like an outcome. Yeah, yeah, something there. that was dug by something else. Mm. Okay, that's 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 gonna be good to think about. So I almost have like even like logs, almost like kind of dug into like the substrate or into like the sides of like the banks of the water feature, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay, huh? Cool. I, I've kind of been thinking about it almost from like the perspective of like a monitor breeding, where like you want to have that <laughs> substrate. Like, yeah, no, no, I, I haven't seen that. I mean, it could be because I've, I've got the wrong type of substrate. Well, I, I mean, I think you've been you've been no. cranking them out, so I don't think you're doing something wrong. But. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's 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 up. Yeah, we're not talking about that. We're talking about like natural behavior. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, it's like like you hear about like those uh, somebody found like a Gould's monitor nest in the wild in Australia, and that was something like ten feet down. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that, I mean that's that's where the female had to go to get the perfect, you know, yeah, temperature. Um, wow. you know, the perfect like humidity yeah. and temperature. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about that. <clears throat> well, these these these, these uh, crocodile tegus we speak of, they're not cheap. They're very expensive. Am I right? Am I or am I wrong? Well, yeah, it took me a long time to figure out how to do it. <laughs> I got to do the build. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, 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 wait. Is it? Are you literally the only one producing these? No, there's a couple of people who have. A buddy of mine in Brazil actually sent me a picture of uh, of one that he hatched out this morning. Actually. Oh wow, that's awesome. How do you sex them? Do we make sure we have a pair? Um, there's, I think. If I'm remembering correctly, I, I, I work with so much stuff, and my memory is not what it was when I was 20. Um, so you're gonna have to excuse me on that. But it's a noticeable difference around the vent. It's like scales. I 
I think there's one scale that's like egg shaped there, but I might be thinking about another critter. But it, it's if you look at the vents, um, and you hold them, you hold them together. They're, they're noticeably different. Okay. Uh -huh. And you know when they get when they get some size on them, the males are bigger, and the females have a different like body structure to them. They're kind of like uh, like kind of like pear shaped. They're heavy heavier towards the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we just uh, we've been raising them separately. We just kind of wanted to, you know, make sure that one wasn't eating more than the other necessarily. Um, and they definitely grown a lot in the first year, but it, slowly it, it wasn't super noticeable until like we put them next to each other. And right. the larger one does seem to have some structural differences, like a like a larger head and a more like streamlined body than the smaller one. I'm kind of thinking just maybe that's you know the bigger one's a male, small one's a female, but we'll definitely have to do the uh, yeah yeah that, that sounds pair. sounds like sounds that sounds like you have a pair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the, the male is probably like uh, 20 30 percent bigger than than the female or the uh, the supposed one, and they're the same same age, came to us at the same size. And you never you never heard them make any noise, right? Like when you grab them, um, unless it was me, like like you know cursing because they they're biting me other than that no right okay yeah because it's interesting because i've noticed the ones from the upper amazon they'll they make noise they'll squawk at each other they'll squawk <laughs> when you pick them up but the ones from the lower amazon don't no yeah, I, that, I, I, I wish that'd be pretty cool but no yeah. I, I haven't heard them make any noise yeah huh so there there's there's like the northern or like the higher end of the amazon the lower end version or like the southern version or how, how does it work with these um yeah, that, that's what it seems like. I mean, they're they're different. The ones from the ones from the upper Amazon look like a Timon lepida, um, and the ones from the lower are more they're more brown, green lizarda. Yeah, like yeah, Timon lepida meaning like a, a jeweled lizard, like yeah. a green lizarda. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Bitching. All right. Are you guys? Yeah, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll turn out to be different species. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever taxonomist needs to write a paper that year, you know. Right. <laughs> Uh, now, to, to talk about croc monitors, I know we were speaking, you know, about you know them being overfed or them they, them getting to a weight that's just not good for breeding or whatnot. Um, have it's you not good, not good for survival either? Fuck survival, for period. <laughs> In general, yeah, fuck, yeah, they're, yeah. Not, yeah they're not. They're not. They're not going to live to be old men or women. No. Now, what what is uh what's an example of something that should be fed to a croc croc monitor, or or what's what's your take on it as far as your your routine on feeding them? Okay, well we're, we're feeding them chicks, uh, and quail chick quails. Okay. You know our logic is that they eat uh, you know the, the mistake that people make with them in the wild they have huge home ranges, uh -huh. and that's one of the reasons why they uh they fight with each other too because it's like, and they fight among sexes. It's like typically most monitors won't uh won't fight uh you know one of the opposite sex but the monitors that have been uh shown to do that appear to be ambush predators like you won't i and one of the i don't i don't remember if it's glebopama or tristis or one of those that have been shown to be ambush predators so it's like they have they have they have something to defend they have their feeding range to defend mm -hmm. um so like my theory on on croc monitors is uh that they eat a lot of birds and they eat a lot of flying foxes in the wild. Hmm. And so they stake out, they have a big home range that they move around at, they move <clears> around <throat> a lot and then they wait, uh, they wait for, uh, you know, the, you know, they like lay claim to like several fruiting trees and stuff like that. Hmm. That's why they're territorial. And, uh, you know, they eat a lot of birds and bats and they travel, you know, far and wide between the fruiting trees in their, in their home range. Right, so they're burning a lot of fucking shit because they're they're moving so much, is what you're yeah. saying. That's versus, that's what I believe. Yeah. yeah. Versus here, they're just fucking perched or just chilling, waiting for the right. same. Right, and you know, they're getting food. It's, the moving is all about is all about getting food. If they don't have to move, they won't. Right. So that's very true. Because I mean, I've worked with you know, I've worked with uh, out of probably a dozen monitor species in my lifetime, and those were, I would say, where they were probably the most sedentary. Oh. Hey. The rock monitors. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Because Interesting. people make them that way. I guess. Right. The, the are, are there's, fairly there's active. Tons, wait, there's tons. A ton. But, hmm. but I mean, you know, compared there's to like tons. a uh, like a Gould's monitor, a mangrove monitor, peach throat, or something yeah. like that, water monitor, they seem to move a, a lot less, in my opinion. 
Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, I mean, granted, the- you know, okay, I, the ones that I got were, were captive, so they might have been screwed up. Mm-hmm. But the ones we have here, those don't bounce off the walls. No, they're not. They're 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 uh they're they're a super observant animal, and being at that kind of was that a white claw you're drinking there? Oh no, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, just check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're, so what I've what I've noticed, I mean, how observant they are in their environment, like what Quetzal was saying, with they have these huge home ranges. You know, they basically are purchasing perching on these large logs. Yeah. and cruising these territories so it's like you know anything catches their eye they're going to go for it you know mm-hmm. and unfortunately with a lot of captive species in my opinion when we feed like this the animals always appear to be hungry well it's a learned behavior that we're yeah. teaching them essentially every right. time that cage opens they think they're going to get food right. so obviously we say oh we got to feed them based yeah. off the behavior in yeah. the wild they they're working for that food and there's a there's very, very few in situ photographs of, of croc monitors in the wild. There was an, a really, really interesting one that was shown uh, a number of years ago, I think, where there's this really large croc monitor that's the typical thin body, you know, muscular, and it's rummaging through this dump site. Uh, and it's just, you know, opportunistically feeding on whatever it can. Wow. Damn. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Nice my, I mean, mean, my my whole theory is you keep them lean and mean. Yeah, it's yeah, and, and that that actually goes with almost any reptile or any animal. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, we're both, yeah. we both agree on that. Yeah, yeah. Because I was talking to my boy, I was talking to one of my buddies who you know he he collects and and he's we're going to be breeding basins and and emeralds cool. and and basins and and chondros, some nice ones, and he tells me how he only feeds his males once a month. And he feeds his his females every once every three weeks, but they're good sized meals though. You know what I mean? And right. he yeah. says he says he's getting super he's getting so much success breeding males that are always hungry. Yeah. He well, says, you've got to figure too. You mean I mean, you know, the majority of people that keep reptiles that you know we're under this preconceived notion that you once to, a week, yeah, yeah, that you got to feed them once a week, every uh, a meal every week. You know, a rat every yeah, week. Yeah, everything is not a king snake. Exactly, or a rat snake. Yeah, <laughs> you know, if you, you're talking about indigos, you know, you oh yeah, you're not going to feed an indigo once a week. You're going to feed an indigo every couple of days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, then there's, and but there are some species that have to require to be fed that have to feed every day. Yeah, like any any fish eating snake, yeah. any fish eating snake eats. You know, is going to eat a lot of food. It's going to eat a lot of food. Right. But uh, but yeah, like any size. For me, like like all the tree vipers I work with and the tree boas, you know, those get once a month as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, breeding season, you know, we'll put we'll double that up for the females right. because it takes a lot out of them to uh, to uh, you know the breeding. Yeah, and I mean, most of these the snakes too, like the basins and these and the chondros and stuff like that too. They're they're mostly they're like an ambush. Yeah, predator. they're ambush feeders. I mean, yeah. the rat doesn't walk by every, every exactly. So they could be sitting exactly. on that same stick. You know, for a month before something walks by or gets close Damn. enough where they snag it. Right. Damn. Yeah. So true, man. This is strange. What, what is... other monitor species are you working with? Um, I got uh, Black Salvador. I got a Komodo. I got uh, Spinulosis. Um, what else? You guys need Spinulosis, Des. Okay. That's the yeah. one. One of the few. Yeah. Send it over. You like them? Yeah, yeah. You need them. Okay. In my life, I've had, uh, I've, had, I've, had I've had McCrayi, um, I've had Indicus, I had peach throats, mm-hmm. I had Scalaris, I had uh, blue tail monitors. They have Uwana and Jubiensis. They have what Uwana? Yeah, they have what Uwana. Hey, you guys have Uwana? Yeah, you got a no, one you got a male. Huh? <laughs> I have. You know, I'm pretty sure it's a female. I'm not 100. Yeah, we're, we're not, but not sure, but we have what's one. Uwana? What's a Uwana? <laughs> So it's monitor, they call them. Oh my god, thing is so hard. Is she, is she super? Is she super shy? Yeah. It, so it, it's interesting. Yes and no. Um, I got a pair. It, it like so we had it in this enclosure that they're like it was visually completely isolated where it, it couldn't see in or out, right. and um, it was it obviously always really shy, burrowed a lot, but then as it got more accustomed to feeding in there, it would be out all the time and would start charging the front looking for stuff and would you know just got really bold started all I, I, I never heard that about a you won't I I mean I thought about I thought about getting those for my place in CR but uh 
you know, then when I learned about how shy they were, I was like, yeah, I'm, ne I'm never going to see them. And yeah. So we had it in an enclosure that was like deeper than it was wide. And we right. had a croc monitor right next to it. And that croc monitor went somewhere else. So we combined the two enclosures where the croc monitor's enclosure had a screen front. Right. So now, now you can see into, you can see in from half of the enclosure and it's, a, right. it's been a lot more reclusive recently, but like, it's been starting to come around a little bit more where it'll be out more frequently. It hasn't been tongue feeding unless it's like right at the front already. Right. But uh, it, it's like, it's not necessarily acting like a typical tricolor where it's just super reclusive and, and uh, hiding all the time, which is yeah. it's nice for us. We get, we get to see it. Yeah. Um, right. yeah they're incredible animals. Right. Yeah. It's a it's gorgeous, a gorgeous animal. animal. I mean, you should, you should definitely, <laughs> definitely pair that animal up. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah, we're, we're, we've got a couple I people tried, that uh, yeah, we're trying to, yeah, there was something you know. that was coming in uh, from Europe, but it got snagged before it could get here, so. That's the problem, is that yeah. they just never imported it. That's, I mean, that's, that's not an easy monitor to get your hands on, huh? Yeah, no, you don't see them very often. I mean, I got a buddy who, do you ever read this paper by this guy named Walter, Walter with a V, uh, Vejola? I think, I don't know if I'm saying that right, he's Finnish, he's got a weird name. Sounds but he, it's he did a paper on those it's available on uh or it's a paper of the monitors of hamahara mm -hmm. and you know he talks about uh he went over there and you did some field work with those it's available on biowack i'm sure you can pull it up online okay um and he seems to think that they're uh, and you know i know him and he's solid solid guy solid field guy um that they're uh they eat a lot of megapodes Mm -hmm. And that they'll have within their range like several megapod nests that they claim. So those will those will fight among the sexes. They're one of a few monitors that'll do that. Um. So yeah, that's something to consider when you're pairing them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely one of the one of the scarier ones to you know think about breeding. Like their the jaw pressure on those is just oh yeah insane. Oh, I but, didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I think other than the croc monitors i don't think there's a monitor i'd want to get bit by less like <laughs> i occasionally like i see like bite a glove or something and they'll hang on for like half an hour and you can't you can't get that glove away from that lizard no matter what you do really yeah, their jaw pressure is it's ridiculous and i i, I think they're the, the fastest monitors i've encountered I probably had like worked like 15 different species here and there right just as fast as croc monitors it's it's scary how fast these things are this yeah, point. so maybe, maybe so, that that lends some theory. That lends to my man's theory about them being bird eaters. Hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, probably, yeah, probably, yeah. They're and like arboreal is super inclined too. Like they'll be jumping around like you know branches and stuff just as fast as on the ground. So, yeah, really intelligent as well. Really like calculated. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. They're very, I was, I was actually, I was curious as Des was about if you had experience with those. We, you touched on it briefly. No, before. no. It's, I, I would like to work with them. Maybe we'll work with them here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're a lot of fun if you can get them to come out. <laughs> yeah, maybe we could hook up something, something fancy with like, uh, like one way glass. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, 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 work. Yeah, cool. you know, that, that kind of worked with with ours where it didn't see out, and over time got a, got comfortable to be essentially out almost all the time so mm -hmm. they're just sure. so beautiful yeah, it's this, yeah in that that paper that i'm telling you about the guy the guy seems to think that they they, they migrated um during different times of the year hmm. i haven't looked at the paper in a couple of years but I'm, I'm almost positive i heard that that you know like they yeah. come down to the they come down out of the forest to the stream beds or whatever i'll send it to you Des. yeah i was just gonna ask you yeah just, yeah, send You've me seen it, right? yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i'll just bring it to you i'll see you in a Next what? What next week? Hell yeah! yeah. Team yeah. Urban yeah. this weekend. Yeah, you weekend. can always bring me literature. All right, cool. <laughs> Bitching. But yeah, keep me posted. Let's keep in touch. I'm curious to know how that uh, that goes for you. Thank but you. Yeah. What do they? Well, what do their teeth look like? Do you? Have, do they look different. You ever see a skull of one of those or anything like that? I can't say I have. I mean, definitely. Open, I've seen the inside of, of its mouth, like just when it's you know, like having it in a glove when it's trying to. Right. Stuff. I mean, I don't think like dentition wise, anything more like significantly different from other monitors, but just something about their jaw, just, it's just, They're it just like seems a lot stronger. They than just I, don't yeah. want to let go, you know, right. once they got a hold of something, they hold on for a while. 
do they do that behavior when you see them also, like, when they're eating a, a prey item? Do they do that as well? Yeah, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. So they don't they don't they don't shake the food. They'll just oh, grab uh, it and no, not, it the- not necessarily. No, you know, not like it's going to be some sort of exaggerated shaking type of motion. Um, but I mean, you know, it's probably just accustomed to eating pre-killed food, you know, or just like yeah. or whatever, you know, something that doesn't have to really work for. Do you have- it? Yeah, it'll swallow in front of. Yeah, yeah it is pretty quickly too. Yeah, it, you know, it doesn't really. Has you ever feed it live? No, I haven't tried to. No, that sounds like it'd be kind of brutal, but it'd be interesting to see. Yeah, it'd be interesting just to see how it deals with it. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. see that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty interesting. I feel like a live. You've mouse. got a, you've got a couple rafts around, I'm sure, right? Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. a few. A handful. Yeah, one or two. Yeah, one or two. With a whale shark once. A whale shark. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, I imagine. Gave my, I gave my spinulosis one time some quails for shits and giggles. Uh-huh. Um, and you know, normally those don't they don't like big prey, they like small stuff. Um, and the quails were pretty substantial. And what they had a pretty interesting way of, of like dealing with them. They'd uh they'd you know jump on them from behind and uh you know pin the wings down and you know bite the head and yeah. kill them like that. Nice. Yeah, interesting. That is cool. And they could handle like they were a lot a lot better at handling like a big bird or a big lizard than they were handling a uh, a uh you know big rodent. Mm-hmm. Speaking of prey size, have you ever given like very large prey to like a croc monitor or a, a komodo and like had it like pick it apart like some sort of large dead mammal? No. no. I mean they say that's important for komodos because it's like Muscles. Yeah, to develop the neck neck muscle. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, never seen a croc monitor. Uh, I've tried. I've, I've given like like a rodent that was like a little bit bigger than what I would have been comfortable with, and they they would use their their claws to kind of like you got it kind of shred it to hold it down a little bit. Yeah, but I never saw like tearing it apart like a like a like a larger brand like a komodo or maybe even like a lace would do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more like a, like a a really well orchestrated kind of yeah like a feed. surgical strike yeah yeah exactly hmm. interesting yeah, yeah it'd be that's... interesting like to maybe like uh like put like a finch in with your uh, you won't I see how it reacts to that yeah no yeah it would be or like or like tractor supply get like a chick or something just mm-hmm. throw or, in, or even it. even better a quail that would make more sense because yeah. yeah. If it's true that they they eat a lot of megapodes, that's more of you know. Yeah, well, so we got we got some uh, experimentation to do now. Yeah, some good stuff. <laughs> this it would be really cool. You got um, paper notation right there. Yeah, because not a lot of people work with you, yeah. won't I? Yeah, no, I mean there's there's only a handful. No, really. He's trying, he's trying, trying to, get to get some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got. You. I would I have those. People looking out. So if you know, if you come across something, let me know. So yeah, if you're looking for a male, you said either right I mean, now. We, we really don't I know. don't know for sure no. what it is. Yeah, not sure. I'm not sure the sex on it, but definitely got to figure that thing out. Yeah, I do have an ultrasound. <laughs> Cheater. Yeah, well, good luck. Keep us posted on that. That's <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> yeah that would yeah. be super cool. Though that's a species that needs to be bred. That's a species that needs to be bred more consistently in captivity. Yeah. yeah. I don't think anybody's bred in the U.S. Out. Maybe in Germany. You said you, you got uh, experience with blue tail monitors. Yeah, when I was when I was when I was like what twenty, I had them. Okay, I so never, yeah. I never yeah. bred them, but oh, okay. Because I just I've always heard that like <laughs> MJ <the> laugh. Blue tails, <laughs> blue tails and Uanawa are very like genetically very similar. Like you know, they're very mm-hmm. close related to each other. That I mean, if you had any insights on Uanawa based on on uh, Dorianus. Um, that I can't say. Like, I mean, I was when I was asking you if you ever saw a skull. I saw a skull of a Dorianus one time. Okay, that more looked like a uh, a croc monitor skull than a mangrove monitor skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have a like a sub adult to adult pair of those as well, and they're they're also very reclusive. Like you know, they'll they'll be hiding ninety five percent of the day. Um, but you know, that's another one we really hope to reproduce. Where really nobody's Nobody's bringing yeah, that's them. interesting. You know, those are common per se. Yeah. yeah. They're, you know, I've, I've never heard of those being being bred. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, you know, they're amazing. They can be. Oh, yeah. They're a large, like, animal. Yeah. Their bites are probably comparable to us 
juvenile croc monitor. Like they're yeah, no go. Cool. So I think they they got the closest dentition to croc monitors. Also, mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, they're yeah. they're yeah. They're, I would pass on getting bit by that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, welcome to those all day. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about your Komodo real quick. Um, yeah. If that's okay with you. Yeah. So Quetzal, your Komodo, like how the hell did you get a Komodo first and, right, first and foremost? How did you, you know, even well, get I that? Got, I got that from, that was born at the place where I used to work in Canary Islands. Wow. Okay. Um, and uh, so I got it, uh, you know, the guy said, if I ever breed him, I'll give, I'll give you one. And he gave me one. <sighs> um, and, uh, you know, there's strings attached. So I got to donate a thousand euros a year to a conservation fund. That's awesome. Um. And uh, yeah, she did have a parthenogenic baby, which was kind of cool. Wow! Uh, she lays every eggs every year, every March. Um, but there was only uh, only a couple of couple of good ones we ever had. There's one oh. went full term and died, and the other one came out like a little funky. It was like the tibia was split, uh -huh. and it had like uh, it had a, like one claw on the end of it. Wow. Oh, you never told me about that. That's cool. Oh, no, you, no, you never told me yeah, about so that. Yes, it looked like, you know, I, we cracked yeah. jokes when we took pictures of it. Like, yeah, somebody somebody must have hybridized this with a veiled chameleon because that's <laughs> what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, yeah, the bone, the bone was split. Um, huh. But, I mean, it did, that didn't live long. That only survived a couple of months. But, I mean, who knows what else what, what else was wrong with it. And how, how old is your Komodo? Uh, she's like 14 now. Wow. That's, that's a pretty good age. Yeah. She's yeah. Big. She must be big, right? Not terribly. She's not a big individual. I'd say, uh, I'd say she's about like six and a half feet. So the, like males, the males are the ones that get that. Yeah, so males are the ones that get big. Females, right. females are not. Would you ever? I mean, have you ever like? Are you on the look for a male or anything like that? I mean, oh like, yeah, I've, I've tried to give male the male for years. I've pretty much given up. Uh, you know, right. it's like they just they the, the 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 powers that be don't want me to have one. Same. That's how it works with a lot of this shit, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I got my talents, but I'm not a, I'm not a politician. I don't, you know. <laughs> it's always the way to be, you know. Like, don't give in to all the bullshit just for, you know, something like that. But I no, I mean, it's not the way to be. I would like to have some komodos and breed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, you, you're pretty confident you would have no issue with that, huh? Oh no, I could give me a male, I'll breed them. <laughs> <laughs> give, me a mail, give me a mail. I'll give you fifty komodos within a couple. Of weeks. <laughs> what the fuck, man! Get this guy a mail. Just get him one mail, please. We got to Let's all come together as a community. Like, hello. Right. Like, let's figure this out, man. We, we can we'll do it up here. It'll be easier. Yeah. Oh man, just a bad visit wall. Um. Now, mm -hmm. what, what zoo do you know of in the uh, United States, Ari, or any yeah. of you guys uh, that have komodos? Oh, oh lots, 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 lots. Yeah, yeah they're they're not a they're not an uncommon animal by any means. Uh, it's just you know they they require a lot of space. That's a thing, you know, and uh, you know that that's about it. So, uh, but they're they're super cool. I love Komodo. I, I, I'll be I'll be flat out honest with you though. Though I I prefer croc monitors over Komodo any day. Yeah, Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, that's just my. I mean, that's my opinion. I I, yeah. I mean, they're both. Incredible animals. Komodo is obviously iconic. It's a Komodo dragon, you know. It's yeah, yeah. It's That's a very I different. Animal. Yeah, very. Uh, and, and the croc monitors are, are very intelligent looking uh, and behavior wise. I mean, you guys know you have them. You know, you can yeah. you can actively look at an animal, and yeah. when it looks back at you and it's ahead of the game by a step, you know you're dealing with something a little yeah. you know a little different. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, there's yeah. there's truly nothing like it. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. Wow. yeah been fortunate to be around a couple of Komodo dragons only for, for brief encounters, but like coming away from them, like, well, I, yeah, the croc monitors, they, there's some extra dimension there that I, I don't yeah. think it was Komodo. I don't, yeah, I don't I really have experience with, with them at all, but, uh, agree. yeah, exactly. It's a very, yeah. it's a very primitive kind of, uh, I would say, behavior. I would say the life of a croc monitor is more, is more complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like their, uh, like their diet, Involves more problem solving, right? It's, it's, it's specialized. Yeah, it's very specialized. And by that arboreal lifestyle to it too. Yeah, exactly. Motos aren't climbing all the way up in trees and stuff like that mm -hmm. as adults. I think that's uh, that was one of the crazy things I learned going to Corey. Because Corey has, I think they're eighteen feet by twenty or something. I don't know, but they're really, really big. And all his crocs were at the very, very, very top of the enclosures. Yeah. Um, 
And I was like, damn it, this is nuts. You know what I mean? Like these fools hang out on the top of the trees, basically. Yeah, right. It's like or, like an, an eight foot an eight foot vertical cage is not arboreal. Yeah. I mean that's what we do because that's the options we have, but uh, right. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, just imagine seeing that in the wild, though. Like an eight foot fucking croc monitor, like on the yeah. top of the tree. There's, a, would, uh, there's a great uh, notation. I, I remember. I can't remember what. I think it was in Daniel Bennett's uh, monitor book. And it, it, I mean, I, I might be wrong, but I remember reading it. It was one of the first times I was reading about them. This was years and years and years ago. And there was, uh, they talked about. Um, uh, like record lengths with them, you know, reaching certain sizes. And there was like some ridiculous, like um, statement saying, you know, like 12 or 13 feet, like this huge reported animal and some, some biologist or something was going to studying them or somewhere or on a, on a hike or something. And he had his uh, local pop when guides with him yeah. and they had their dogs and, and this big lizard dropped out of the tree and grabbed the dog yeah. and took it up the tree with it. <laughs> And I'm just like, that, Whoa. that is cool. That's some Jurassic Park shit. Yeah, the funny part was they never That's heard back about the guy, too. So who knows what happened to the guy? <laughs> yeah. You probably, you probably don't want to yeah, yeah, right. you you take any LPs on that trip. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, guys. Dude, you guys have a uh, Steven or Des, is there a rapid question you have for Quetzal or Ari? A what? A rep. They were asking. They were. Quetzal, uh, who was your mentor when you were first starting out? Oh, I had a lot of them. Yeah, I want like which one stands out the most to you? Let's see. Uh, I'd say Philippe de Vaugelay. Wow. Because mm -hmm. he um, he used to have a pet store in New York, and uh, that was the first time I ever saw like you know cages reptiles kept anywhere other than like a fish tank with newspaper. Right, and he had like these big, like planted mixed species exhibit. You could see like the love that went into him. Yeah. So yeah, he's probably the most <clears throat> influential herb guy. But I mean, I I got uh, you know I like to talk to as many people as I can and learn as much as I can. I mean, even even people I don't like, you know, <laughs> if I can learn something from them, it's uh, excellent. Hang excellent. I hang out with them. I'll talk to them. And <laughs> I'm a selfish fuck. I want to know. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> You're the least selfish fuck I've ever met. Amen. To knowledge. Oh yeah, there you go. Knowledge. He's a hoarder. Um, <laughs> Steven? Yeah, so uh just as somebody who's been in the reptile hobby profession, whatever we want to call it for so long, I mean, how have you seen it progress? Where where do you think it's heading? And uh do you think that we've as a community lost our way in, in any aspect of what we're doing well it comes in cycles i mean it's like i'm not into that like popsicle popsicle neck ball python bullshit you know it's like you know we're not in you know we're not in blade runner days yet you know there's a lot of there's a lot of really cool stuff out there that nobody pays attention to yeah he said blade runner days man if you don't know that movie fuck that shit's <laughs> Great movie. Wow. Yeah, great, great movie. Class. That's one of Classic. my favorites. I'm watching that tonight. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you remember my favorite line in the movie? And she's like, he says to like, uh, it's like a stripper type of chick. He's like, is that a real snake? And she's like, would I be working in a place like this if I could afford a real snake? <laughs> <laughs> Christ. Classic movie. Oh, man. But, uh, but yeah, honestly, it like comes in cycles. It's like, you know, now it seems like people are more into... Uh, you know, they're getting into more obscure stuff. And again, it's, you know, and it's also the laws, uh, the mm. laws dictated as well with like people are less into bows and pythons now because it's like, you know, the legalities that's going to be banned before a, uh, you know, before like, uh, you know, a house snake is going to be banned. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Hey, Quetzal, one of the things, that you know, a lot of people fear in the United States is PETA taking over some shit drastic to where we can't keep animals as pets. How far do you think we are from that? Um, I, I, you're asking the wrong guy because, like I said, I haven't lived here for 24 years. Um, but there's always, uh, there's always a you know a pinhead like there's always that pinhead presence. You know, we have it in Costa Rica as well. 
um, and you know, it's like you know, they're all these laws trying to pass all these laws, like okay, you can't touch animals and this that. But meanwhile, they're using Roundup by the side of the road and stuff like that. And you know, my theory on that and what I always tell people, it's just like it's like okay, first of all, the damage that uh, the reptile hobby does is really minimal. I'm not saying it's nothing because there is stuff that does get overcollected, like, but um. Yeah. Uh, there's stuff that gets released. There is stuff that gets overcollected, like those Ligodactylus Williams eye, those blue geckos from some just like one mountainside in yeah. Tanzania. Psychedelic um, gecko. Yeah, psychedelic geckos, stuff like that. That damage is done. I'm not going to deny that, but for the most part, it it's minimal. And uh, in places like uh, like for example in Suriname, where I've traveled extensively, you know, there's a quota for live animals, but they protect the forest. But meanwhile, like in right, right over the border in Brazil, you know, we watch Brazilian TV over there. They have all these stupid reality shows about, you know, these stormtroopers kicking down doors. Yeah. Arrest, he's got a pet parrot, but they don't protect the forest. It's all chopped. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, if you protect the forest and you do sustainable stuff with the animals, that's a lot better for everybody. Right. Um, but you know, for the most part, most of the people who go after, uh, you know, the pedotypes and, you know, this is what I always hit them with whenever I, whenever I got to deal with somebody like that, it's like, you know, the truth of the matter is you're not coming at us because you really care. You're coming at us. If you really had any balls, you would be going after Montesano or something like that, or a logging company, or, uh, or you'd be, you'd be protesting like a, a fishery or something like that. Right. I mean, you know, so- because in theory, according to them, animal people are uh, easy targets, right? And it's only uh, it's only recently that you know there's like uh, P Jack and stuff like that have got organized in Costa Rica. We had to, we organized the union as well and got some laws repealed as well mm. for that. Because um, it's you know, there's a there's a, a body there that wants to you know nobody can touch animals, nobody can photograph animals, but you still <laughs> chop the forest and all this other crap. Would doesn't make sense yeah it doesn't make sense and it's just like it's based on the fact that somebody wants they think more my opinion it's based on the fact because they think animal people are easy targets yeah not gonna fight back <laughs> and they want to name to make a name for themselves like okay i got such and such an animal band in such and such a county or something like that but i mean if you really wanted to make a difference you know you'd <laughs> yeah. you'd go for something real what matters exactly yeah. what matters yeah, yeah. Fuck, man. So true. Well, that's why this world is bullshit. <laughs> but keep it simple. It's like, it's not only there's a benefit for somebody as a human being, you know, who's into, who's into reptiles. It's like you learn, you learn about geography. You learn to be observant. You learn to be sensitive. You learn about nutrition. You learn about medication. You know, I knew, and when I was growing up in New York, I had, because of my reptile friends, I had more opportunities than the rest of my crew, because I knew people from different walks of life. You know, I knew cops, so yeah. I had people in guards. I knew, you know, I knew older people who gave me jobs. I knew X, yeah. Y, and Z. Yep. Huge part. Yeah. 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 So it was a benefit as a human being by, you know, from working with reptiles. It benefits you. It makes you a better... I mean, I'm not saying everybody. There's scumbags out there. Yeah. There's mercenaries. I'm saying it benefits you if you're a good human being. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're, not yeah, fucking, but... you're not burning people and fucking, you know, yeah. fucking them over. But hey, Ari. But if, you care, if you care about the animals, you really care about the animals and you want to learn. You know, it's like one of the countries I visited in my life where I was looking at a statistic recently. It was an African country called Sao Tome, which is the least the least visited country in the whole world. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, but that's thanks to the interest. That's wild. Hey, Ari, you there? I'm here. All right, my man. So we're wrapping things up here. Um, before we go, I you know I want to know. I'm sorry if, if you have anything you want to go ahead and mention. You know about the zoo or anything like that, man. Just go ahead and let us know. Um, yeah, this is your your time. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it. Like I said, it's going to be awesome. It's uh, going to be a great opportunity for everybody to come come out and and uh, really enjoy what what we're all in this for you know um and i'm just uh like really really blown away and feel blessed and privileged that i'm in the position i'm at uh with all of this i mean uh, i get to build enclosures which i love doing and um 
discussing uh, what we're going to be putting in exhibits and, and, and what the future holds yes. for everything. And, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be great, man. It's, uh, it's awesome. It's about time. Does that count as the second reach around? I think it does. All right. What's the, what's the name of the zoo? Uh, it's Rep he said it. Well, yeah, yeah. One, it won't be, uh, so, so tentatively, the if the you name. Don't want, you don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> you the man with a little <laughs> <laughs> so tentatively, the the name is Reptilandia Reptile Lagoon. So Reptile Lagoon, or wait, let's Reptilandia. say that one. Reptilandia Reptile Lagoon. Yeah. Because I want to, you know, use the name from CR as well. Yeah. What's and what's the name over in CR? What's the CR name? The CR name is Parque Reptilandia. Parker Randall. Oh, all right, all right. Bitchin. Oh. Reptilandia. That's pretty hard. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> logo. All right, Ari, you're the man. Thank you so much for setting this up, bro. I swear to God, I'm going to give you so many hugs when I see you in Arlington. It's going to be cool. ridiculous. Hey, uh, thank you. Uh, no, no, no. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. And thank the, you guys, hey, thank you so guys for taking the time to have us come on. I mean, it's uh, – uh, I always enjoy talking to you guys. It's great. I'm, and I'm glad it worked out where, I mean, sure. we've been stressing pretty hard trying to get Quetzal back up here just because with all the COVID shit, it's just really been a nightmare. And, uh, you know, the, the skies essentially opened up and we were able to make this happen. And it just, you know, uh, he's been up here and we've been really busting ass on stuff. So I'm, I'm really happy uh, that we were able to talk to you guys too, because, uh, you oh, know, yeah. it's what it's about, you know, having you know, talking about reptiles and it was so mm -hmm. funny the other day we had a we were we're all hanging out you know having a couple beers and you know talking reptiles and, and a, a mutual friend of uh quetzal and eyes and ryu uh dante finolio who's like a biologist san antonio just a great guy and just does a huge amount of field conservation work and and i mean i could go on and on and on so and we're all sitting in my you know in our bedroom you know with beers like you know on the godzilla comforter <laughs> geeking out about reptiles and reading books and holding snakes and stuff like that and just you know and i like looked around and stopped for a second i'm like god we're like i'm like 41 you know <laughs> god only knows how old quetzal is you know it's like yeah yeah <laughs> you know a bunch of like a bunch of bunch of little kids just geeking out on what we love doing you know it's like that's what it's about right that's what I'm saying, man. You know, this this was a reptile conversation. You're right, but not, you know, I don't. It's not every time we're talking about this these kind of species with somebody. That's why I, I knew it was special. And Quetzal, thank you again, man. I'm telling you, this this right here will be. Re, I'll rewatch this episode. I don't know how many times because, you know, you dropped some shit that I haven't heard from any guest that we've ever had before. So it's definitely an honor. It was a treat, and I'm looking forward to the round two of having you on. And then we're obviously gonna have Ari on again to talk about the zoo because we're that's yeah. that's something we all need to be updated on, man. But and, and I'll I look yeah. forward to seeing you guys in a uh, what is that a couple weeks? Yeah. Two? Yep. Yeah. Ryu, you gonna be there? Yeah, yeah. Ryu's yeah, coming down. We're definitely. we're uh we're gonna have a, a, a hell date. yeah have a date weekend. Oh yeah, so. the first time we ever hung out was at that exact. Uh... Oh my god, too yeah, cute. Right. It's real. <laughs> Sappy story. Yeah. Well, cute. You guys, hey, listen, you guys have a wonderful night, okay? And you, hey, safe you're travels good. back home, Quetzal. You're the fucking man. Plain and yeah, simple. You're the man, bro. See you guys Thank you. Right. Right. you are the man, Quetzal. See That's you later. Right. Thanks, okay. guys. Bye. All right. Fucking legend. Woo! Sick. That was sick. Good shit, guys. Really enjoyed that episode. I really did. Oh, no. I barely felt like we cut it off short, but you know, because he, these two, especially Ari, we could fuck, we could have made this a five-hour podcast. No, there's it's no issues with that, but that's why we have rounds of this shit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, man, what a great episode! I hope you guys learned a lot. You know, it was I think we talked mm -hmm. about a lot. You know, we talked about Crocs, tricolors, um, take crocodile tegus, which is awesome. I mean, how many how many guests actually could talk about crocodile tegus? I mean, this dude breeds them. That's mm -hmm. fun. It's pretty huge. Stars came from him a long line. Mm -hmm. What was it? Say that again. Originated from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was, I wasn't trying to be offensive when I asked him why they're so expensive. I didn't know he was like one of the only like few. Yeah. That, what but, did we in like? Uh, uh, just in, enough. Um, I, yeah, I mean, they've been offered for sale a handful of times ever. So you know. I don't know about you guys, but I am curious. I am curious of his basin pricing. I'm curious of his fucking, you know what I mean? Who know? I mean, just curious. Costa Rica prices, but what? Are, I mean, never know. You never know. Probably, probably similar or higher. I'm saying, right. but uh, yeah. 
But and definitely like a lot of like natural history knowledge that we haven't gotten a lot from other guests necessarily. You know, right. his 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 knowledge of like just like the microclimates that some of these will you know species come from. For one, he's been to a lot of these places. I mean, we you know. Yeah, that's he listed great. off like the number of places he's been to, just like quickly. A few of them, yeah. I mean, he's been around forever, done a lot of field herping, and knows a lot of people who've been out in the field. Like he has like these little snippets of knowledge about the climate and just like the environment, the food sources, how they change throughout the year. That I mean, you know, few other people would would really have that we'd have the opportunity to talk to. So well, let's, see, let's 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 be honest. What fucking ninety eight percent of the people in this hobby only envision what it's like for these things to be in the wild. They don't actually go there and see it. Maybe like ninety five. I love what he said about like okay, yeah, just because their climate seems rainy, they're in a dry hole. Right. You don't think that, right? Yeah. Off, you know, you just assume, right? Just like mm -hmm. the feeding thing, like oh, just because the snake's fucking coming out of the glass doesn't mean you should feed the fucker. You know what I mean? Like. So a lot of, a lot of things I learned in this episode for sure. So I'm definitely going to be rewatching this. Yep. Um, definitely appreciate anyone who watches this, all the subscribers, please like share comment, all that good stuff. Arlington. You could see us three at Arlington. If you really want to fuck with us, I'm looking forward to hanging out with them. I, can, I actually get to fucking meet Des for the first time, which is dope. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I know her really well just with this podcast, but looking forward to hanging out with you guys. Lars will be in the building. No. He's too much. I, know. I thought about you, you, we'll be you like reaching up and come. grabbing deli cups, throwing them and shit. And it'd be a if disaster. you want to hang out with Lars, and I tell Dave Levinson this too, you have to come to his his zone. Like you have to go to his building. Lars yeah, doesn't Lars doesn't he's travel. The he is the attraction. But no, he's just 150 miles an hour all day long. Like yeah. if I do this, I would have to hire like a full time nanny. Because I, I wouldn't even be able to talk to people. I would be chasing him everywhere. Like he, this fool was he was swinging the fucking, he was swinging the the uh, what was he swinging today on the oh, the forklift? He was fucking just yeah, you know, the forklift. Man. Me, 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 me. He's so he's savage. Like, Warren, he's like he knows exactly what goes on on that thing. He just runs to it every time I bring him there. That's what he wants to do. I love seeing Lars's stories. I like when I see Lars is on a story, I'm like, all right, this is great. It gets me all happy because it's exciting stuff because you always look at the kid's face and he's having the time of his life. Always. Yeah. Right. He's, he's so on fire right now. So yeah, I just, just safer for everybody. If he's um, contained. <laughs> Damn it. We can tame it. Fucking lock that. I'm hoping once he's like, you know, once he's a couple years old, that I'll be able to bring him to the shows and he'll listen and, right. you know, stay by my side and stuff. But right now, it's just impossible. Well, I don't even take him to the grocery stores. Like, I, he, no. Mm -mm. Don't blink too fast, Des, because it's going to be like. I don't know. You should see my living room right now. We are broadcasting from the living room and in front of me is. Hey. What looks like a tornado came through a child's play area. Well, I'm actually happy for that because the lighting's perfect this episode. Your guys' lighting's 100% great. Good. So, yeah. If you can somehow get this lighting in your podcast room, we will be, you know, I'm just we saying. We are building a podcast room. So when our new what? building, we have a legit yeah. podcast room. Yeah, that's why we haven't been in our regular area because we're tearing that building down. So. Well. Fucking changes in the changes here. Yep. I'm excited now. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, listen, have a good night, everybody. Um, thank you. Thank you again for tuning in. Please subscribe. And you know, fucking we'll tune in next week. Um, yeah, we should, you know, hopefully get another episode in before Arlington. Um, we'll figure it out. If not, then fucking you guys I think we should have as a guest. Oh shit. Yeah, episode before Arlington. Oh, who should we have? Why have I not had my full feature episode yet? A full feature episode of Carl? I don't even know about that. That's just you, you. You think that this episode? Oh, Quetzal and Ari. Yeah, they're talking the whole time. Oh, jam packed with knowledge. I'm conservation freaking Carl. I'm a wealth of knowledge. Not about captive breeding. Oh, I I bred croc tegus. What do you do? Okay, so what's one thing you're not impressed of other than the croc tegus about Quetzal there, Carl? What were you what were you, what what, what is why does it have to be about that necessarily? 
What? I, you're freezing up. I, I can't even understand what you're saying right now. But I, you were like, can you what? hear me now, Carl? Yeah, yeah. What's the question? What was what what was it that you weren't blown about that what Quetzal had to say? Like, I don't understand. I mean, I just think your direction as a show, it, you're, you're you go towards the wrong thing. You're talking about Bolin's python. Oh, yay! Bolin's python is a black carpet python that lives high up in the sky. Yay! Whoop de do. You know, maybe ask Ari about the conservation of Bolin's pythons in the wild instead of like, oh, hey, can I get one for not ninety five hundred dollars? Like, oh you know, wow. I mean, he's doing significant work with a species that is in decline. And you're like, hey, how do you keep them? Like, whoa, you know, wow. Real, real wholesome. Co- oh, don't censor Carl. Oh, <laughs> you better not. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if you we can better Carl not censor me. Week. I don't know, man. I don't know. I hope you guys are ready for it because you never know. It's going to be information overload. But tune in next yeah. time, guys. Have a good time. Carl. Okay. Have more-